I gave you permission. So uh, now, there we go. Oh, thank you, cool. Dave. Dave's, Dave's so Dave's nice. On it. Look at that. Nice. Look at I might. Maybe I might. Gentleman Jack. Hey, hey. You know what? Jack. Here's a fucking toast. Here's a toast to right, everybody yeah. getting through this shitty ass year and making it to 2021. And hopefully 2021 is so much better than this bullshit balls eating, taint licking, <laughs> ass sucking year. Yeti, Yeti, Yeti. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I want Salute. official gentleman, Jack. This came with some. That's good shit. Uh, but the glass, it came Not with. Strong. Yeah, dude. That's I, wanted somebody, I don't know if it was one of Dave or Jay. I am. Uh, I had one of my coworkers gave me this because that's they think I'm an alcoholic. Bottle. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the and, uh, high proof too. That's the high pro glow. And right I bought there. this is the official, I guess, I guess candy <laughs> that goes with it. Nice. Uh, there you go. Yeah, so. It's an odd combo. But, yeah, but, this stuff you know. is actually pretty fucking good. All you gotta do is just that's mm-hmm. impotent. That's pot. That's impotent. Impotent. Are you are you mm. mixing it? You're just drinking it straight from that the dude. Straight. <laughs> he's, he's, ah. he's dipping. He's, he's dipping even, the Reese's uh, into yeah. the whiskey. <laughs> Damn. He's like, not like even black. Like he's, not even, milk, yeah. 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 <laughs> he's not even black tooth green. I got that my bitch. peanut just, butter and my chocolate up. and my rum. Woo! Rock and roll. Yeah. Come to yeah. I listen to Van Halen, not Van Hagar, Dave. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> Woo. I'll give him the bird. Give that motherfucker the bird. I just noticed that's, that Dave's got the. No, that's a great album. No, that's a great album. That is a great and album. I got, and a great live. I got, it's nice. a, uh, that's fucking great album yeah, too, for, man. For Neil. For Neil. Nice. So we might as well start. Let's. Uh, I mean, 2020 was obviously a, a shit year, um, and we all we got was what we got two months of shows. So I want to start there. And we played um, one. <laughs> yeah, and we did. So yeah. our band, our band played a show. <laughs> That's right. Um, <laughs> on which is one. more than a bunch Dude, of nationals. In what's yeah. crazy? It was a freaking uh, leap year night. Like never happened. You know, never happened again for another four fucking years. You know, it's like so. Yeah. So I mean, history. I, I'm, I'm I'll start real quick, and then I want to go to everybody and see you know what show if you went to a show in 2020. If did you go to a show, and if so, which one was it? So for me, the two that I went to and it went was in a three day span of each other. Uh, so it was lucky it was right at the cusp so saturday night march 7th i got to see rival sons uh one of my oh, favorite cool. bands the and band. they played uh, downtown tampa outside um and it was they were they were unbelievable uh kind of went at the last minute it was covid had kind of started happening so it was like one of those i didn't know if they were going to still have it i figured i'm going to go down there right before the show starts and then jet when it's over so i did and then two nights later went to see overkill and x order Nice. Um, I was there. Nice. Yep. yep. So, so that was a nice, nice way to end my concert going for 2020. So, who wants to say what shows did you actually get a chance to see in 2020? Well, I was with you at Overkill, bro. It was my birthday, and that was the the next day. I'm driving home across the state, and it's suddenly like the news is just blasting all this news, like America, get ready for a shutdown. And a week later, Damn, the whole fucking die. country <laughs> shut down. I was like, yeah. Whoa, that might that was the fun. last show. Mm-hmm. think before it all like closed up yep what about you uh lord gates what'd you see i saw two shows in uh january i saw a church of misery which was just on oh, shit fucking believable yeah reggie's uh 42nd street oh my god unbelievable and then the only other show i saw was in uh february and that was the obsessed and today is the day and that was it you saw the obsessed. You're fucking kidding me. Wow. Dude, Wino was so cool. Wow. I was telling uh, Bill about this. I was at the show and I had interviewed Wino when I was back in Connecticut on WCNI radio. I interviewed him a couple times and I showed up at the show and he's just standing there. And I walked over to him and I said, Hey, Wino, what's up? And he's like, Lord Gates, what's up, brother? How's it going, man? No, gave me a hug. Give me a hug hey, and brother. shit. You know, he's really small. You know, he gave me a hug what the fuck are you doing here? You know, because last time I saw him was like two years ago, two and a half years ago in Connecticut. Wait a minute. Oh, Did you say he's here. small? Yeah, he's, he's short. He's not that fucking small. <laughs> he's like you're my height, fucking, dude. I'm you're short. just like a fucking grizzly bear hugging him. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. He's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. For the real thing. he's smaller <laughs> than me. He's yeah. smaller than me. <laughs> but yeah, he gave me a hug, man. He's like, what the fuck are you doing here? I go, I moved down to North Carolina. And and then uh, right behind him was the lead singer, uh, Steve Austin. From today is the day who I've been friends with since the like six dollar, fucking, the, six, the six million dollar man. The six million awesome. He he was cool. Today is the day was awesome. They had a new record out. Uh no good for anyone. And dude, I had such a blast. 
And then cut to like a week and a half later, we were out having dinner for my son's uh, 16th birthday. And it was literally like, boo, someone hit the power grid. Lockdown. That was it. Mm. That was literally like the last time we all went out as a family was on my son's birthday, March 13th. That was it. Bill, what what did you what shows did you see this year before the guy shut? You down? know what? Honestly, I don't think I saw anybody unless it was in January, and I can't remember any concerts. Well, bro, you uh, when did you see? When did you meet up with uh, Wino? That was last year. It, it was, was before like the back, year. It, it was, was like before... November of nineteen. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, somewhere in there. Um, no, not even October, maybe. Okay. September, so October of yeah, 19, it was way before. I think the only show that I honestly that I saw. Was the fucking show that we played that Shiver played? Um, Shiver at Sarbiz. At Sarbiz, right. yeah. And that was that was it, man. Sarbiz. That was like the only show or music live music I think I went to. I've seen a couple bands um, up here where I live. You know, <clears throat> probably in the last couple months, there's been some music, live music, and a couple bands playing. So that's been cool. There's one uh, cover band up here. They play all kinds of cool shit. So that was that was pretty neat seeing seeing them play, but I yeah, mean, fuck, and, dude, I'll take anything right now. Well, and, and if it wasn't for the, uh, I mean, unfortunately, Bill got his staff infection at almost exactly the same time that Jay got COVID. So our plan to go see Steel Panther uh, was negated, but we right. would have seen Steel Panther um, like mm-hmm. about ten days ago. So where that and, is that? And at? had a shiver and had a shiver practice. Where yeah, is Steel yeah, Panther at? Uh, they were at Janice Landing. It's an outdoor yeah. uh, courtyard type uh, venue in St. Petersburg. So they've had a few shows here and there. It was it was Blackstone Cherry, which is a good band, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, opening good. up for Steel Panther. So that would have been a fun show. So, I, w- I would like to go on record right now. I would like to go on record and apologize to my three podcasters right now and say it took a while. It took a, probably about a couple of months. But you finally got into Steel Panther. I do like Steel Panther. Nice. <laughs> all right. All I, right. It just clicked. Right. I don't know what it was. <laughs> very well, very like well. My craziness, like guar. I like blood and guts and gore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I went back and just watched that fucking live show where the lead singer dressed up like Ozzy. Oh, that's and, the fucking best. Dude, the banter is... The, yes. It's the it's bass It's like a comedy player. show. It's, it's like the a comedy ba- show. The bass player is so goddamn like hilarious and just so out there man and then i yeah it just clicked and that 2020 suck song is hilarious dude it is it is and it's it's, uh and i actually know uh, i actually know the bass player uh travis um i've interviewed steel panther a couple times but i actually got to know him uh personally because he was dating um somebody that i know um professionally but um yeah, he's a super, super cool dude. Uh, big sports fan from Ohio. Big Browns fan, Indians. Um, he's quick. He's yeah, quick. you gotta. He he says a lot of things really, really fast off of the lead singer and off of the guitarist that you don't. You kind of go go back and catch it, and you're like, "Holy shit, that was funny what he just fucking said." But like, dude, the, it took me a while. I was like, "All right, there's a lot of fucking dildos and dicks on this fucking." Show. fucking love it i love their videos it was it's like funny as hell dick though stuck to yeah suction cup dick yeah oh my god dude glory <laughs> hole is like look at jay jay's got a big sheet in it <laughs> big jizz yeah. yeah how can yeah, you dude <laughs> oh my god and the girls like got jizz all over dude. yeah people at work don't rip people at work like all the guys i'm hanging out with I think i'm like this fucking baby pervert fuck <laughs> But Me too. <laughs> when they when they yeah when they see like I I sent them all that they're like what the fuck is wrong with you like they're like this is a real band I'm like fuck yeah it's a real band yeah hell yeah and they're fucking amazing. great musicians too I mean yeah fuck like, yeah and, I mean obviously yeah Russ, they are Russ was in uh, fight fight and, oh yeah man that's right I mean that's right. I mean it sticks as a great drummer I mean all those dudes are I mean Satchel's a shredder I mean Russ is a freaking bona fide shredder might be yep. the preeminent shredder of of heavy music right now or at least maybe not to Zach Wilde. I don't know if you could touch Zach Wilde. That dude is just insanely good. Um, but uh, I want to ask you guys, what's the concert or tour that was supposed to happen in 2020 that you're the most bummed out you didn't get to see? I'll, I'll start real quick because I had, uh, I was going to see, I was going to see uh, the uh, Psycho Fest. I had, I, oh, my, yeah, my company's convention Vegas lined up with the Psycho Fest and that was going to be the, you know, the 25th anniversary of down, um, you know, the 25th, the throwdown. Um, I think crowbar was also playing a separate set there. I mean, wind hand, 
I mean, you can go on and on and on. They were uh, King Diamond, I think, was playing it. Danzig was doing Lucifuge. Fucking, oh, I mean, that right, was gonna be right. And that's Damn. You know, it's, it's just it's mm-hmm. like, and I was gonna be there. You know, the free hotel, the flight out there, all that stuff. I mean, but so that was my bummer. So who else wants to maybe name a tour that they were supposed to see or would have seen? For what me, about, it, like, it wasn't a tour, but it was. I was supposed to fly home to Connecticut uh, back in, I think it was May or June. And it was supposed to be New England Stoner and Doomfest. Nice. I was supposed to go three. It was uh, four four days. It was three days. It was Friday, Saturday, Sunday at Altones. And then it was Thursday, a pre-show that was supposed to be in, in um, Norwich, Connecticut. And I was going back. I hadn't. I have not been back to Connecticut since I moved down here a couple of years ago. And I was going to go back and visit everybody. And it just shut down completely. Yeah. What about you, Jay? Anything you can well, think I don't, of? I don't, here's the thing. I don't think I was actually planning on going, but there's just the thought that Metallica was going to do two nights in Daytona at the, at the uh, oh, Speedway. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. right. Oh, yeah, that's Rockville, right. Because yeah, they knew yeah, Rockville welcome to Rockville yeah. from Jacksonville to Daytona. Yeah. Yep. Speedway in March. Uh, I think it was like March <clears> or something. <throat> it was, it was going to be great, you know, kind of a great weather season. Metallica was going to do two nights yeah, two totally I mean, different sets. I mean, you, you for Daytona right. Beach to say they had Metallica done, for two man. nights, you can't. Well, Deftones were supposed to play that. Deftones yeah. were playing that. Who was the um, uh, Who was the band that was supposed to headline the other night? There was three nights up here. Yeah, Metallica, correct. Metallica did Friday and Sunday. I That's think right. was, it, was it Tool headlining Saturday night? Uh, no. Could that have been no. No, it was uh, somebody read, else. Let me see if I can pull it up because I know that they had a pole? whole night of punk rock. Like one night was definitely. Punk yeah, what, the Saturday was very punky. They had like Bad Religion and uh, a bunch Rancid, of Rancid. I think Saturday. Rancid was yeah. supposed to play. Air, Airborne was supposed to play. I think. Yeah, I from, yeah. from oh, dude, what a great band, man, from oh, Australia. Oh man, love Airborne. Love. They're Airborne. like they're like the. Uh, well, it doesn't make sense because fucking is an ACDC from Australia. Yeah, they're like another yeah, yeah. Australian they're, ACDC type. They're band. A very much ACDC. I I, I yeah. really think that first is, album's great. Uh, his he's the singer is like the, also the lead guitar player, so he's kind of like half of. Bon Scott and half of Angus Young with yeah. Brian Johnson thrown in. I mean, he's everything. I only got to see them once when they toured on the first album and they were incredible. And then I never, I don't remember them coming around again. Damn, I don't remember them ever come, having a chance to see them in the U.S. Yeah, uh, yeah check the, this out. Uh, yeah. Friday night for that was going to be Metallica, Deftones, Social Distortion, Dropkick Murphy. Social, let's see. Yeah. Um, then we go on to Saturday. It was going to be Disturbed, Offspring, Stained, Lamb of God. Alter Bridge, Holy Undead, Hell Yeah. Hell what? Hell and, yeah! Uh, Hell back yeah. to Sunday would be Metallica, Leonard Skinner. That was the big Godsmack, one Godsmack, right Mastodon, Gojira, Anthrax. Oh, Gojira! Gojira! Yeah, Gojira. Airborne. Holy yeah, shit, fuck that. That's <laughs> a fuck. Yeah, it was going to be May 8th, 9th, and 10th. Yeah. And that, what about I'm that, bummed, uh, The Fu Manchu show, man. Remember that they had the 30th anniversary tour? I think uh, Nebula might have been. I forget who was open. They oh, the, the system. Uh, not the systems go. The uh, the actions go. Man actions go, right? No, wasn't it the, the van? Um, what 30th anniversary of which album? No, this was 30th anniversary of the band. The band. Oh, the band. 30, 30 years of the band. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was, and they're still doing that tour, but it's postponed until. Right, right. right I'm now pissed that I missed um, Tool because Tool is mm. supposed to tour. That's right. Yeah. The new album. So came I missed out that, but I had a buddy of mine just send me a shirt. I guess that was from, he had a long sleeve that he had got from, I don't know, somehow um, the war, uh, warehouse, whatever the hell, but it's a shirt, long sleeve shirt from the tour that never happened. Mm-hmm. So I got one of those. And then, uh, Slipknot was supposed to was supposed to do some touring, so that's one of my. As far as live bands go, um, people, you know, a lot of people, you either love them or hate them. Like we've talked about Slipknot before, and it's no secret that I'm I'm, I'm a big fan of them. Um, but live, you, Incredible. it's fucking hard to touch those guys live. And I, I mean, they're people. I know people that are death metal, big death metal fans. Like that's all they listen to, and they like Slipknot because there's so much death metal sounding shit in the in the guitar especially like mick thompson you can you know his right. his influence is fucking he wears those on his fucking mm-hmm. on his sleeve like a, like a champ but i remember <clears> the, the show the, I was bummed about. the show we went to uh bill at mohegan i remember there was a moment where they were playing i forget what song it was and both you and i looked at each other and went holy fuck yeah because they've got that one song fuck, I'm trying, i always forget the name of it but it's like they're like dun, 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 dun. Yeah, that's it. Yep. Like there's yeah. a space. Yeah. 
there's nothing but fucking silence. And it was like dark at that point. And then every time they played, the lights would come up. Yeah, it was like three and or four were, seconds of silence. Right. And uh, remember what they were doing? The fucking uh, the guys were jumping off the trampolines. When we saw them, they were jumping off those giant trampolines. And they oh, were right going, off the sides. Yeah, off the side. No, it was um they had the guy that was up that was playing all the fucking garbage cans and shit. Yeah. And then they had the the, other guy on the other side and they would jump off the trampoline and jump onto the other side. And dude, they were, they had to be jumping like 10, 15 feet off the fucking platform onto the thing. They were insane. Fucking phenomenal, man. But that, that song, like I'll find it. I'll find that song and send it to you guys. Yeah. When you hear that part, it's so fucking tight and precise Mm. that that's what it's like. It's like, and you're just like holy how the how then you know no there's no bleed no Nobody like goes like even this like guys doing like the scratching and the samples right. everybody is balls dead on and you're like right. how is that po- i thought helmet was tight this is nine yeah. guys yeah yeah how is it, how does one guy not go oh, fuck this <laughs> <laughs> they don't yeah. they don't yeah. they're just like right right yeah it's amazing <laughs> Well, I know what everybody else is drinking. What are you drinking, Jay? What do you got? What would you I got? Cr- I went and got the Kraken. The Kraken. Kraken and Cola. Did you get Kraken? You got to ask Kraken. Kraken and Cola. You got to get the Cola. You got to get the Farva Cola. Farva Cola. Farva Cola. Caffeine free diet. Yeah, yeah so I don't stay up at night. It's important to stay. <laughs> it's important to stay on that diet. <laughs> you got to stay low cal. I got to drink the Kraken rum all night, fucking long. I forgot. <laughs> He's a mess. He's I forgot the one other the one other awesome thing that happened in 2020 was I got my card. Got my card. Look at that, oh, Mr. Legal. You're so you're legal. Oh, you legal? legal? Legal weed, oh, man. 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 What's I, your? I gotta. I gotta. Not to be too personal on here, because we want to keep it. You know, this is the four of us. But I can hit unrecord. But did you get your card for a certain reason? Yeah, anxiety. Um, so I can yeah, get off the medication. <laughs> yeah, well, that too. <laughs> what did you say? I'm a fucking hothead. I said, yeah, to get high. Like, <laughs> like, Third reason, high? yeah, to get fucking high. Reason? I get high. I was looking at his There you go, man. sir. What do you need <laughs> this, sir? I need to get high. Fuck, here you go. Here you go. There, the reason why I'm legal I'm right is because here. I, I, here. Yeah, I'm because I had to, I, I weaned off of some brain brain medication that I was on and not, and I'm using CBD to self manage. Oh, so, cool. You know. Nice. Well, Very you know, good. Jay, I know Jay can back me up on this man. If you're going to go, uh, go hard with the CBD because it's the one thing that can fucking take care of all the ailments and all the bullshit. Take all yep. those pills, throw them out the fucking window, man, and get on the weed. Get on the CBD. Yeah. And uh, I just hope that eventually I can't wait for the uh, insurance companies to actually, you know, recognize <clears throat> cbd and cannabis like they do these other dangerous drugs that yeah. they'll be happy to sell you for five dollars through your insurance and yeah. they won't cover they won't cover cbd but you know what i mean like but let's not <clears throat> let's let's cover the stuff that's addictive but let's not cover the stuff that's not addictive you know like what i mean opiates. like what a racket dude it's right, a freaking it racket right. you know once once you get the big big pharma to start growing their own stuff then it'll be all right they yeah, have when to they figure out how to yeah. How to make all the money right now they're losing the money especially and they'll push you know. all the all the young all the little guys out they'll push all yeah. of the mom and pop places that are making the great shit and they use well they'll try they'll, yeah, they'll, they'll try. try you're right they'll you'll try they won't though i mean it's like anything else people uh, people know people know good versus bad. right yeah people... versus good high quality versus low right exactly yeah. but uh not to shift gears too much but i i uh, we're talking about 2020 and um you know there was some i mean there were some every year people die, but I mean, there were two uh, or there were the, a few big ones. Let's just say a few big ones from 2020 um, that, that shook uh, that really shook people. And I think, I don't know what the number one one was, but for me, you know, Eddie Van Halen, oh, Eddie Van Halen, man, you know, I mean, EVH all the way. We, we knew that he was, we all knew that he was sick. I mean, he had had cancer since I think 2000. So he was living with cancer for about 20 years. Um, but you know, so I guess him, him passing wasn't necessarily a shock, but when it you kinda was about, Dave, it, well, it no, was, you're right. It, well, that, it came I, out of nowhere. They, I, I yeah, thought that, it was the tip of his tongue's got some cancer from smoking too many cigarettes. Right. I didn't know that he was going to, his life was just going to vanish from us. 
Well, Roth, let alone the craziness he went through in the summer where he's driving a tank down. Yeah, the Roth street. touched on. I don't it. know what the fuck was going on there, dude. That was well, crazy shit, DJ. But he didn't do that this year, though. That was uh, I was this year. Okay. That was that was like that was like twenty <laughs> years ago. Saw. Okay, um, okay. But, he did get okay. a motorcycle accident like two years ago, though. Right? Did he? Well, yeah, you know, yeah, Eddie did. Yeah. Well, Roth hinted. I mean, when Roth hinted um, earlier this year, when he said he he said Van Halen's never going to tour again. Like he said that straight up mm-hmm. and, and everybody's kind of reading into like, well, what does he mean? Why is he saying that? And he just said that, you know, Van Halen's just, it's done. He said it. But he was classy but he enough to keep it. He, he, and he was, he was, he never said a word about why he meant that or why he said that. But I mean, that was the precursor to what we found out. I mean, but you're right, Jamie, they had been planning and we found out this afterward, but they had been planning a stadium tour with Roth and Hagar Yep. Uh, where they were going to be doing at, so there was a rumor that was Metallica was going to be on that. I mean, all kinds of rumors. And possibly Gary Sharon. Remember they said that too? And possibly they were like, yeah, you know, we kind of talked about like Wolfgang said that. Well, maybe even Gary Sharon. Yeah. They kind of threw that out there. So, but so, I mean, at least Roth and Hagar would have been. That yeah. That would have been unbelievable just to see the two of them you know, doing a show at the same time in the same place. Right. And kind of putting all, all those that. fucking hits, dude. All, everything oh my God. was wrong. A, a, just a top 10 hit. Every Can you imagine a two hour set list of the, uh, rest of the rock. Two hours? Rock Bullshit. They'd That's have to be like, like three, yeah. four hours. Well, they, they would have come had out and do, do two. They could do two hours, take a break. Roth could go in the back and go, boo ba dee ba dee boo ba dee That's right. You would. And, you know, you would. Yeah. and then fucking come back. I think out. it would have been an hour and a half, 20 oh, minute oh, intermission, rock. hour and a half. Yep. Yep. And then Gary Strong could do like yeah, 10 man. minutes. And then, and they would have cut them out like at the end. And maybe, if maybe they would have done like Panama, for example. Like right. Panama is a song that even though Roth sang it on the album, I mean, yeah, Hagar was singing that song for 10 plus years after that. Like, right. so, you know, he kind of made it his own. So there were a few songs like that, like Ain't Talking About Love, just some songs that, you know, Hagar sang a lot as well. But I mean, just on Eddie, and I want you guys to share anything you want to as well. But I mean, for me personally, I mean, Eddie Van Halen was. I know this is, you can argue about it, but to me, Eddie Van Halen is the most important rock, guitar player in the history of rock music. I mean, I, I agree. I, I just think because not only did he write unbelievable songs, um, you know, for two eras of Van Halen, but he revolutionized the way people play guitar and the way they approached guitar. I mean, look at all of the 80s shredders. I mean, they, that all came from Eddie Van Halen. He changed everything. He made the guitar hero. You know, I mean, to, I know, I know Jimmy Page was a great guitar yeah, player, but, but yep. he wasn't but like the guitar hero. Yep. You, you don't get I mean? a Jakey Lee. You don't get a Satriani. You don't get a Steve Vai. You don't get a George Lynch without any Van Halen. Right. Yep. And the the charisma of him, just the that like they, they say the impish smile of him. Mm-hmm. I went back yeah, and I watched right. the videos when he was on Letterman and he sat in with the band and he did those uh, those stints with Letterman. And it's just he's having he's having so much fun with, you know, with the band, just filling in, playing a little bit of Panama, playing a little bit of ain't talking about love. But I have to say, you know, I have like I remember when I didn't get into I got into Van Halen, I think probably on maybe Diver Down, Women and Children first. But that was because my cousin was playing it. But I it was always in the background. It was always on the radio. But 1984 for me was the album because of my age because of how old i was and i remember that coming out it came out in the winter but that summer of night because it came out in the winter i think in like 83 the summer of 1984 my buddy and my cousin and i were driving around he had a porsche and that's he that's the only tape he played he played it over and over and over and over again (laughs) and i remember just like hot for teacher being pounded in my head Mm jump panama I'll wait, drop dead legs, you know, every single song, a big, huge, giant hit. And Bill will, Bill will back me up on this. Do you remember Bill going to the uh, Woodstock fair and trying to fucking win the 1984 mirrors or the shirt, the mirrors or the yes. shirt, shirt with the mirrors, hammer, they the remember the shirt there. with the yes. hammer yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. or the hat. You remember the Panama hat? It was I remember like one that. of those. It was a hat with a with a Van Halen on it, and it looked like one of those fucking um, uh, smooth criminal fucking hats. Yeah, Remember those? Absolutely, yes, yeah. yes. Didn't Remember that shit? And it had like yeah, a bandana yeah, do. around it, dude. Yep. That was my childhood was was centered around 
like fucking Van Halen, Twisted Sister, Rat, Motley Crue, all these bands that had such a <laughs> prolific effect on me at an early, early age that I continue to listen to them. But th- the thing about Eddie Van Halen is no one, nobody at that time could touch him on guitar. The only other one, like you said, Dave, was Jimmy Page. I think as far as being a guitar hero. Go ahead, Bill. I, I think um Number one, uh, Eddie Van. Before I even talk about Van Halen, the band. Number one, Eddie Van Halen was so multi instrumental. You know, what I mean, the dude played keyboards. The dude yeah. you know, obviously played bass. He he did synth. He did. And the thing is, is he ripped shit apart and built it back how he wanted it to sound. Like his guitars, the Frankenstein guitar. He ripped it apart, put the electronics in it, and made it sound. You know, he was using a fucking drill on the guitar. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, he found Pound ways cake, fucking, to get. Yeah, kick, yeah, yeah, he's fine. He found ways Great to get tone. sounds, and I've read stuff just recently, like how he got certain sounds on certain albums. And it, it'll go back to I was probably, I don't know, nine or ten years old. I'm at my my cousin <clears throat> Kyle's house, who was a drummer, played in a in a couple cover bands. Um, went over there, and he had a huge poster. Uh, like behind his drums of Van Halen. And then he had another one of Eddie and another one of Alex. And I just remember looking at him and he put it on. He'd be like, here, man, go ahead and play. And he'd go out with his buddies. You know, they had like this room in their basement because, you know, obviously Connecticut, you have big ass basements. So he had a room specifically to jam in. And it was just, I'd walk in there and all I'd smell is like weed and booze. And I was like, fuck yeah, looking at the posters. And it was like a hustle. <laughs> Yeah, Usually like a sucks. hustler magazine. Yeah, somewhere. of course. There you go. <laughs> so I get on the drums. <laughs> fucking God bless Larry Flint. Yeah. I'm starting at <laughs> that fine publication. So I'm I get on the drums and he just shut the doors. He'd be like, I'll be back in like a half an hour. Just beat the fuck out of him. And he put on like Van Halen. I was the Van Halen one was the first thing that I got exposed to. He just put that on. Oh, wow. Started. And I'm just sitting there, and I've got these giant fucking earphones on. They look like <laughs> with the long curly cord. With, yeah, Probably. exactly. They look like Pink's a like, tail. basketball cut in half <laughs> on the side. That little head. Yeah, man. <laughs> so I sit down. I got the sticks, and I'm just you know ready to start fucking banging along to something. And like you know, eruption comes on, and all. I'm just like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. So then I start, you know, the songs start. I forget what the first song that popped on or whatever it was. So I'm playing along, and I played along to that. Well, that set everything up because after that, I had got my brothers and sisters. I had that eight track player that my brother had given me because he got a newer one. And I got a bunch of eight tracks from them that I, well, I used to just take them and go downstairs. When I, I got my drum kit when I was like 11 or 12. And uh, I think 11, 11 Christmas or whatever. So I'd plug these, I'd go and get the eight tracks. Well, they had all the eight tracks up until, you know, whatever Van Halen had up until. 81 whatever was whatever albums one and children first or diver down one of those yeah i know diver down was later i think <clears throat> but fair uh warning, maybe fair warning fair warning the first one and fair warning. yeah i forget well, there was one other one they had it was might have been a comp so playing along to that really set how i played drums and approach music i mean it, it's you know dave will tell you dave knows janos i i play a lot like that that was my mm-hmm. Yeah, first your and biggest influence. Your roles are Alex. Your, his, yeah. your roles are hundred percent Alex Van Halen. Man. Yeah. So yeah. that was yeah. talking about Eddie. That perfect dude. That music was like the start of me be wanting to be a musician. And it wasn't obviously I loved, and you guys all know, especially Dave and Jay know this. I love drums. I'm you know I love drums, but I fucking love guitars. Oh, right. Big time. If Big time. I, I know a shitload about guitars, right. but I don't know how to fucking play. Really. <laughs> You're a guitarist I mean, no, living you, in a drummer's body. Yeah, because exactly. you, you exactly. articulate ver- verbally right. riffs like no other. Like You'd be like telling me, hey, let's do this. Do you know? Give me a whole layout of a riff. And I'm like, okay, let's do this. And is this what it yeah. sounds like? Yeah. And that becomes a hit, you know? But I'm slowly learning guitar, so slowly, slowly. So by the time I'm like 70, I'll learn how to fucking play. <laughs> I'll be able to play like You'd be smoke on the water. Yeah. Besides <laughs> electric funeral. Yeah. Yeah. I, electric funeral. I can play. Ask, yeah, my, ask Matt yeah. Pike. Matt Pike. Will yeah, ask Pike, yeah. dude. He'll tell Pike you. will tell you. He's fucking showing how to play that shit on a three string acoustic. That's right, dude. Lessons. 
Well, the, uh, the <laughs> I, I didn't start in chronological order because the first big death of the year, um, and if you guys don't mind me mentioning it, I just was going to go into it, is, is Neil Peart. I mean, I think that one – that one hit hard for me personally, just because like, mm -hmm. I felt so bad for the guy because I've read, I read his books. Like if you read his books, you'll get to know Neil. Like that's yep. the way he was a very, very introverted person, but you will get to know Neil if you read his books. And he was very, very uncomfortable with praise. Um, but what, what's just horrible is that he experienced the death of his wife and his daughter. Mm -hmm. I mean, his daughter died. Um, and then his wife got cancer and he basically yep. thinks that his wife just died of a broken heart. How did his daughter died. die? I don't, I don't remember hearing. I remember she died, but how, how did she die? Oh gosh. I don't um, remember. She, oh, it's a single car crash. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. She was only 19. Uh, was his daughter, Celine, and she died in a single car crash, uh, in Ontario. And what year was uh, that? That was 97. 97 so, because oh, okay. his, his wife died. Was it two years later? It was uh, 98, so it was a year later. A year not, later. Even a year, not even a year. Not even a year. You're not even him, done grieving. No, they show the video of him where he's on his motorcycle, and he's mm -hmm. like, he, he said he just took off. Yep. He left the band, and he took off to go find himself, and he, and he, he said he put like over 10,000 miles on his bike or some insane amount of miles on his bike. Yep. And that, you know, I, got, I have to agree, Dave. You know, myself and Bill as drummers, they're – for me, hands down, I love, you know, the shit that Tommy Lee did with Motley Crue. And I love a, a ton of other drummers, but there is no, no better drummer in my mind than Neil Peart. Hands think, down. Yeah. I hands think down. He is just one of the most prolific, incredible. Um, just he tried different things. Every Rush album sounds different. He wrote all that fantastic music for Rush, you know the vocal, the lyrics and shit. Yes, for he it. wrote all the lyrics. I mean, this this guy was just unbelievable. And I, every, when I start, you know, besides Nico McBrain, the one guy I wanted to play music like was fucking Neil Peart. I wanted to be, I wanted to aspire and sit down at my drum set and play Tom Sawyer all the way through without making a mistake. And I know Bill, you're probably the same way. You're probably like fuck man i wanted to play yyz or i wanted to play you know fucking spirit or radio or whatever it is because it was so he he was so intricate he was so precise he was so he was like a metronome he was just perfect straight yeah, on metronome. <laughs> yeah did you ever challenge yourself bill with a rush song to try to see if you could nail it <laughs> huh. no i mean i've played i've played along to rush um a lot uh, just um, more or less, I played along to Rush just for, just to get to get tighter. I, yeah, I'm just a totally different drummer than than Neil Peart. Uh, and obviously, by no means am I saying that I could have fucking played like Neil Peart. Or, but he was just so tight and precise, and um, you know, all over. Not, I don't want to say all over the place, but he was able to mix stuff up so much as to where I was more of not not as like prog or as as um busy as as like he was but i definitely have played along to a lot of rush just to get better and the fact that like you know like greg said not only did the dude play drums but he wrote lyrics and everything else but he was he was so into his drums like the drum yeah. as an instrument and everything mm -hmm. he didn't just play drums he was the drummer he was more than 33 and a third of rush in my opinion mm -hmm. to me he was like 55 oh shit with all the lyrics of rush he read so many yeah. books that yeah. he lyricized every bit of the rush you know yeah archives. just a phenomenal just just a phenomenal musician like a th that, a that's the thing piece. is nobody yeah three nobody piece. will ever nobody will ever play no nope. he was like he's the eddie van halen of drums Yes, I, I agree. Absolutely, I agree with that. One hundred and ten percent. Wow, absolutely. And to say that both those guys, yeah, the sad and part, they both, both died in the same, in the same year. year. Yeah, I know, I know. Pioneers, Two yeah. just pioneers. amazing so pioneers. Okay, yep. I like yeah. that, Bill. Pioneer, yeah. okay. absolutely yeah, pioneers. pioneers. And now, now, does that tell you something? Is that is that the? <laughs> I mean, you could look at the stars and the solar system, and I know Jay, right. you're you're big into that type of stuff, and it's. Well, yeah. If you look at this, I mean, they they passed away this year, and you also look at when when they became prominent 
you know, you were talking about when you were listening to Van Halen one on eight track that same year, I was listening to Van Halen one on the eight track. I remember grammar school years is when Tom Sawyer hit the radio and mm. like, you're talking about cutting edge music coming out at the same time. Right. You know? Yeah. Away from pulling away from the pack. Yes. That was yeah. rush and Van Halen were two of the bands that, that pulled away from everybody and they were their own there was think about it who the fuck could have touched van halen and who and rush and no. van halen were obviously two yeah. different types of bands right like, obviously phenomenal musicians phenomenal bands mm -hmm. but rush very prog very mm. um kind of eclectic very just everything was you didn't know what was going to happen next like you could buy a rush mm -hmm. album and be like what well i wonder what the fuck this is going to sound like as to where van halen was kind of the same but van halen was very experimental rock rock heavy so you kind of right. knew but mm -hmm. then you didn't so that's where the that's where they were such pioneers because like a lot of bands back then okay so and so has an album coming out okay you know it's gonna have three fucking ballads on it two radio songs and then right. you know whatever six filler songs i mean that's the way right. a lot of the stuff in those times were were written you know they'd, they'd have throwaways where like Rush and Van Halen, fuck Rush would have an album with five songs on it that's you know, you know an hour and twelve minutes long, mm -hmm. you know, and there was right. no yeah. filler. Yeah, it was, it was like Tool. It was like yeah. Tool, you know. Right, right. But Rush, Rush always had. For me, it was Rush would do a couple albums and I'd be like, oh, okay, but they would always pull me back in. They would mm -hmm. always, there would always be, you know, wh whatever album was coming out at the, at that time, like you said, Bill, there would be a couple songs that would just click like holy shit he's doing something different on this alex is doing something different on the guitar i've never heard that bass line before from you know from getty what the fuck is he doing on that holy shit you know and the same thing with you know for van halen for me there's uh, there there's you know there's the uh there's there's the roth van halen and then there's the 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 van hagar down here but then later on down the road it started to balance. Billy's breaking your balls, Dave. <laughs> yeah, just a little. Right. Can you feel it? Can you sense it? It's all right. No, <laughs> no, man, no. It's all good because think about the staple between those bands. What was the staple for Van Halen? Eddie Van Halen, Alex, Alex on drums, Michael Anthony on bass. His back, well, and, and his backup vocals. Right are, yeah, his oh, fucking yeah. backup Absolutely. vocals. One of the best ever. Pinnacle. Van Halen Absolutely. had some of the mm -hmm. best backup vocals ever. And that's, I mean, and that's those the choruses. Don't, those choruses don't work in any other band. No, they don't. don't. But, but, no, no. Jay. No, but that's don't. the the choruses are exactly the reason why you could move on from David Lee Roth because to Van, it, to, right. they they had right. these big choruses. And guess mm -hmm. what? The same guy's voice that was there before is still right. there. Michael right. Anthony. Right. Right. He's Michael the guy Anthony. that carried Powering. all the choruses anyway. Yeah, that's Powering right. The backup. Yeah. Yeah, Fuck yeah, Michael dude. Anthony Power. He was yeah. the fucking, he was the, the the jack holding all that shit up. He was yeah. like, he was it didn't here. matter. You could have had here. even even a fucking bass. Like even even with Gary Sharon. Gary Sharon, Dave likes extreme. Gary Sharon was a great fucking singer. <clears throat> but Michael Anthony fucking made him sound Gates. fucking even better. He better. made him fit oh, for oh, Van Halen. Yeah. So you know right. what I mean? It was right. But just you mentioned, you guys both mentioned, uh, or I think all you guys mentioned the lyrics of of Neil. But it's probably still to this day, it might be my favorite lyric of any band of all time, which is he and Tom Sawyer. No, his mind is not for rent to any god or government. Always hopeful yet discontent. No changes are permanent, but change is. Like that dude was so smart, and that's why I love reading his books yeah. because yeah. he's he's like. Yeah. He's such an intelligent, you know, well-read. He just a really, he's the kind of person. He's like a he, modern wizard, man. Yeah, he, he fucking but was. He wasn't like, but he wasn't judgmental. He wasn't like on his high horse. Nope. For somebody that was considered nope. by many to be the best drummer in the history of rock music, mm -hmm. he didn't have, yeah. he wasn't no arrogant. No ego, so no he, ego, right? He didn't. I mean, Absolute he was like. Absence of ego. Yeah, yeah he was just like, I, I just love, I, I love what I do. I have a great passion for it. Mm -hmm. Um. 
but he wasn't about anything to do with the glory behind any of that. Like he yeah, just, like Bill, he had Bill, a passion and love for playing drums. Bill equating him to, to a magician. Um, I'd say a guru, uh, yeah, he was. an enlightened like, soul. A shaman. Source, you know? I'd a say shaman. a shaman. There you go. Yeah. Big yep. shaman. I got to meet him once. I was telling Bill about this. I got to meet him once. I was working backstage at Mohegan Sun Casino. Uh, I was in the entertainment department. I was a runner that day. And uh, they were like, Hey, you got to go down to the, um, to the room down. Uh, hang on, hang on. Stuff. I could just pitch a, when Greg said I was an entertainer. Greg running? He what? walks, he runs in, and he's like dancing, and he's got like nipple tassels. <laughs> 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 I was running. He's got a wig on and shit. Yeah. Hi, oh, I'm right, here sorry, for. Greg, I'm here for Neil Pert. <laughs> Neil no, Peart? I, I Neil Peart. No, I, and they're like, oh, you got to go to Star Dressing Room A, and you got to pick something up. So. I hear this like, and I was like, oh, I know what this is. I open up the door and there's Neil. I was like, oh, it's like the briefcase opening in Pulp Fiction. Pulp you know? Fiction. Yeah. And I was like, hey, I was like, and I was like, don't fucking say anything don't stupid. Don't say anything stupid. Yes. Don't fuck and this I was up. Like, Just be cool. Be cool. I was like, hey, what's up? I'm supposed to come pick up your laundry. You know, and <laughs> that's what it was. He's like, yeah, it's right over there. And I said, and he's like practicing on soul practice kit. I was like, hey, you know, I, I had a question for you. Why was your 747 series discontinued? You know, why didn't you make those drumsticks anymore? He's like, oh, I got a new, I got a new, you know, endorsement from so and so. And I was like, oh, that's cool. He's like, why you're a drummer? And I said, yeah. And he goes, oh, cool. And I was kind of like, I was standing there watching him play, but it's like, it's that point where you, you know, you have to leave the room. So I was like, yeah. Okay. Goodbye. The fuck out, weirdo. (laughs) Beat it, beat it, nerd. Beat it, nerd. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, Nardwar, get the fuck out. Yeah. But yeah, I got to meet Neil Peart, man. And that's awesome. I, that I is, mean, I've and seen, that's rare. I've seen, I have literally seen Rush. The first time I saw them, I think, uh, what was the, um, the bunny, the the oh, the, Test for Echo, Presto, Presto, no, no, Presto, Presto, Presto. Presto. That was I the bet. first time I saw them. Was Presto when I saw I them? I saw that. I saw that every tour. tour. Well, we, we, yeah, we. That was um, that well, was that at, That was that played in Worcester and Worcester. Providence. Yeah, I went to Worcester. I think you yeah, went to I Providence. But I think, yeah. That yeah, was when I, I first I went and started seeing them. Tomato and I, yeah, Steve, my buddy Steve, who listens to the podcast. So you all can say hi to Steve. He lives in California. Yo, Steve. What's up, Steve? So Steve is probably the biggest, besides Dave, he is probably the biggest Rush fan on the planet that I know. No besides, shit. I, I, and no shit, yeah. So he will definitely, he will definitely uh, listen to this and probably chime in on something on the facebook page. well nice, i nice. i have to chime in and say that one of the drummers that we lost this year and i know fucking bill and i suffered a big one on this oh, one reed. reed fucking mullen from yeah. corrosion He's way too young of man. conformity dude yeah. and um i want to go i actually want to go to my notes here because i don't want to mess this up but he died on january 27th at the age of fucking 53 dude too young 53 he started coc back in 1983 he was also in teenage time killers no labels man will destroy himself if you don't know that band check him out the band brown and obviously uh, he played guitar he was, and sang in brown right he did yep he sang and played guitar in brown and he was also playing drums in coc blind uh with my buddy uh carl son of a gal from uh coc and up, carl? You, you know you know i'm gonna kick this back to bill because Bill is the one that actually got me into COC because I remember Bill and I were driving around in your car and I think it was like 91, maybe when blind came out and you're like, you're like, Greg, you have to fucking listen to this drummer. He is unbelievable. And I knew nothing about COC and he's like this. Mine are the eyes of God is one of the most incredible drum songs in the way he was doing shit. And it, it just clicked with me. I was like, I'm I'm there. I'm a fan. I'm in it. And Bill, I want to I actually want to ask you this. I want to like when you heard the news about Reed passing away, what were your feelings on that? Um, well, I knew just from, you know, uh, talking to, to people, because, you know, obviously we know a lot of people in that in that circle that, yep. that you know, have been around him. And I know he's he's had some issues. Uh, you know, yep. he had issues throughout the years with, you know, obviously alcohol and, and possibly his back you know, other other things is back what you know whatever that's that's neither here mm-hmm. nor there that's not none of my business or anybody else's business mm-hmm. he had he had some he had some problems and um you know he ended up passing away from it but i was i was really uh 
you know, it's kind of like the same way where Eddie hit me, you know, like if these are guys that were giants to me, um, like growing up and mm. just music wise, like these are guys that I, and this is where you realize your mortality when you start having people like this yeah. pass away. Cause you're yeah. like, fuck man, these guys can get the best medical, the best 53, this, the best but you're 53. I, I mean, I'm fucking 53. 50. So this is, mm-hmm. it was, it was tough, man. It was tough to lose him because I figured he would always come back to COC. I was just waiting for him to, to I was just, I was always waiting for them to go. Yeah, man. He's really got his shit back together. Yeah. Kick it. Looking fucking Beat great. It. You know, like, like you hear a lot of these guys come back. They fucking like Gene Simmons. Now, if you see Gene Simmons, he's like a fucking PT monster. Mm. He's lost like a shit ton of weight. He's, he's in great shape. And you're just like, Holy fuck. That's Gene Simmons. I just saw some pictures of him today. I was blown away in Dubai. Like he's fucking shredded and he's not, he's not sick. He's just got this workout routine and eating. And I always thought like Reed's going to come back like that because he gives such a fuck about drumming and playing. Right. And when, then, then when he died, you're just like, Holy fuck, man, this is permanent. Like there will never be another COC with Reed playing. Like there's like, it, it's just his drumsticks are silent and it's, yeah. That was heavy, man. It's heavy. It's heavy losing, you know, because you feel so much of the, 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 the music that they've written has given you so much throughout the years. Um, mm-hmm. It's helped you through tough times. It's, it's made you happy. It right. gives you that euphoria when you put it on. You're like, oh, fucking yeah. Like voting with a bullet or deliverance or fucking, you know, any of the any of the music that he's played on. I mean, they, mm-hmm. I think they've only done one album without him. Right. Uh, yeah, I think it was only one. Well, they did America Vo- him, right? America's Volume Dealer. That was with that was that with, was with uh, that was with yeah, yeah, he That's plays on that. Yeah, he plays. Yep, yeah, yeah. Who got the fire? One. I remember. Yeah, but I because yep, I saw that tour. Yeah, Reed, that was his last one. So then after yeah. that, we go in in the arms of God, and they got mm-hmm. the guy from uh, Galactic. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then, and he, then we go to then we go to, um, we go to corrosion of conformity. Um, let's yeah, those two or three. No, he played on thing because played on Wise Blood, didn't he? He played on Wise Blood. Yeah, he played, he on, played on two or three, but Pepper yeah. didn't play on a couple of them. Right. But he but Reed did. But he the he you have to understand that not only did Reed play drums for COC, but he mm-hmm. helped create the punk hardcore scene in Raleigh, North Carolina. Which is pretty insane if you think about it. I mean it of is. all the cities, you think of New York, you think of Boston, you don't think of Raleigh. You don't think These of a guys country were legend country ahead right. of their time. Yes. Right. Yeah. right. Ni- 19, so, like in the eighties. I mean, he really formed all of those bands to culminate and start playing those, those hardcore shows, you know, and, you know and what, then look what it transcribed to. It transcribed over to stoner doom. So he, he you know, he yeah. did, he did keep its roots. He went back and he started playing, you know, with, with other guys that he played with a long, long time ago to do the Teenage Time Killers. That Teenage Time Killers r- record is unbelievable. The amount of people that play on it, you know, Randy mm-hmm. from Lamb of God and fucking Leaving from fucking Fear plays on it and Carl plays on it from COC. Mm-hmm. But he was one of those guys. I want to I want to kind of compare him to like a, uh, like a Dave Grohl where he started pulling all his musician friends together to make an album, you know, that would solidify a certain sound, but still keep some type of hardcore punk rock roots. Yeah. I remember the first time I like real quick, I, I hadn't heard of them in eight, 1988. Um, I decided to move the fuck out of Connecticut with my cousin, Brian <clears throat> that passed away years back. Um, God rest time. fucking, uh, Pharaoh, rest my, Pharaoh. everybody love him. If you guys would have met him, you guys would have fucking loved him. Fucking kill him, That's the first guy I played music with and everything else. Yeah. So him and I decided to get the fuck out of Putnam and move to Florida. Mm-hmm. You know, we're 18-year-old little peckerheads, you know, that, coming from Putnam, Connecticut to, you know, the fucking Clearwater, Florida, in the Rocks area is, was a big change. So we used to go downtown um, Clearwater, Clearwater Beach. I remember this guy down there with all these fucking tattoos, like really good tattoo work. Um and he had this fucking skull looking spike thing tattooed on like yeah. his arm. And I'm like, that is so badass. So I asked him, I was like, hey man, what is that tattoo of? And he goes, Oh, it's a fucking band, corrosion conformity, man. You need to check him out. And I got the guy, the guy's name was Ron. I was like, Yeah, Ron, let's fucking, you know, I met him, blah, blah, blah. 
I said, yeah, I'll have to check them out. Like, where, where, where the fuck can I get their stuff? He's like, oh, man, I'll get, I'll get you a mixtape, blah, blah, blah. So a couple of weekends go by, whatever. I see Ron again. He fucking reaches in his pocket. And he pulls out this tape and gives it to me. It's all the COC stuff that had been out. Oh, it's like up. eye for an eye and all the early shit. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think tech, yeah. technocracy might have been Technocracy was out. Yeah. Technocracy yeah. I think that was, was on it. And it was just so he, I was like, holy fuck. So I listened to him. Pero was like, yeah, I've heard, I have a seven inch of these guys. Yeah. So that's where it started. And then it was funny because when I was in the Marine Corps, Blind came out like while I was in boot camp or whatever the fuck it was, or, but might have been right before. So when I'm in, when I'm in the Marine Corps, when I'm actually in the fleet, I have that. And I'm listening to it one day with some guys and they're like, oh man, yes, yeah, this is fucking COC. These guys used to be punk. I said, yeah, I know. Isn't this crazy with this fucking with the way the direction that they went. And then the next album comes out, which was what, 94 was Deliverance. Oh, which was even just more fucking huge. radical. Yeah. Just heavy. Yep. Sword like, or doom shit. Yeah. Not even to me, they were like Leonard Skinner. If Leonard Skinner were to come out in 94, that's how I thought. That's, yep. that's the way I looked at it. I was like, this is Leonard Skinner. If they played through Sabbath's rig. It was Leonard Skinner through Sabbath's rig yep. yeah. in, the, in the, in the modern era, you know, but I, I went and saw, coc on the blind tour when they opened up for henry rollins they played over at club babyhead and i have to say i stood off to the stage uh, stage right and i all i did bill was watch reed fucking play because i remember played telling me he was just like it was you told me you were like dude that drummer listen to because you said something like you said something like he's really young and he, he just knows what to play with the band. And I was sitting there watching him going, oh, my God. That's, how do you, how is he doing that? It was like nothing. Yeah. Well, it was like it was like fluid. It was just complete. And, and that he just, you know, I only got to meet him once. I only got to see him one time when he did the COC blind. I met him on, on the bus one time I was interviewing Carl. And he was a little... He was out of it. He was having back problems, so I think he was taking some stuff for it or whatever. Yeah, I met him. But he was cool. He was very cool and very reserved. But, you know, I have to say that that was one. With Neil Peart, that was one of the one of the guys that passed away this year that really, really, really hit me, man. Hit me hard on that one as far as the yeah. drummer goes. Yeah, and you're right. Yeah, man. Well, I'll well, talk about uh, – there's a couple people um, – I'll talk about I'll I'll say some names, but there's a couple that I'll that I'll that I'll get into just for a couple minutes. Um, you know, we talked about Neil, we talked about Reed. Uh Bill Riflin, real quick. Bill Riflin. Yeah, Bill I couldn't Riflin, go without man. mentioning Bill Riflin because um he played with a bunch of people, session guy, but he played with ministry and he played on the you know the Psalm 69 album and a couple other <coughs> ministry albums. I got to see him live one time with uh with ministry um just just another fucking helmet? pioneer powerhouse what's that with helmet when ministry played with helmet yeah didn't no. play with them no 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 time? he just no he played with no he played with uh, ministry rem and a couple other bands oh wow but, um just a great great dude um a great drummer I, you know i'm sure he was a, a pretty pretty down-to-earth guy i never heard anything bad about him uh little richard fuck i mean yeah. you can't go without mentioning little richard yeah. Lemmy Especially loved him. Since Lemmy loved him, yeah. yeah. I mean, Lemmy loved him. He was as far as adversity. Long Sally, man, one of the greatest songs ever. I mean, adversity wise, you don't fuck. You know, you're talking about a a, a gay black man from the south in yep. those yeah. times, yeah. and he was like, "Fuck you." I'm. Gonna he didn't care, dude. He didn't care. No. He, no. he always no. happy. He was happy. Yeah. He was gonna be flamboyant in your face and rock the fuck out. Yeah. He's like, "Fuck you." You don't like it. Go yeah, but he was like little. He was like, what's his name? Uh, Jerry Lee Lewis. But on like high octane, yeah, Complete and a, and a better octane. performer, in my opinion. Yeah, I, mean, I agree. And very influential, mm -hmm. man. Like he, he, he pushed through a lot of bullshit for for people. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. hey, this is That's fucking right. rock and roll. Yeah, the barriers he broke those. Barriers, and I am, man. yeah, and I am rock and roll. You don't like That's it? Right. Go fuck yourself. That's right. Um, Joey Image, Joey Image, uh, drummer for the Misfits. Yep, and a bunch of Misfits stuff. Lost him this year. Uh, this next one, we we know we we met this guy. We we hung out with him a little bit. Um, Tony Costanza, who was the original oh, machine, from, head uh, drummer, machine head drummer, yeah, yeah, and uh, played with Crowbar. And yep. I think the show that we played, that Shiver played with Crowbar, he was the drummer. And uh, we we talked to him, hung out with him a little bit. Very mm -hmm. down to earth guy, very 
humble guy, just, you know, like a big teddy bear, nice guy. Um, so we lost him this year, which was, which was pretty unexpected. Um, Frankie Benali, who oh. I really liked uh, Frank Benali as a that drummer. Suck, mm-hmm. dude. So many fucking albums that guy played on. I mean, he played with Wasp and he yep. played with Quiet Riot. Yep. And, uh, he's, you know, he did some other, some other stuff, you know, here and there on the side. Um, fought really hard against cancer, man. Anybody, you know, having, you know, fought through cancer myself uh, more than once and dealt with it. Um, anybody that, that has to fight through this, you know, that fucking horrible bullshit disease, um, and fought as hard as he did. And as long as he did, man, you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's a testament to the type of person he was. And, uh, you know, so it sucked losing him. Um, Riley Gale from powerhouse that came mm-hmm. out of fucking nowhere. Um, you know, yeah, power, that was power that trip. Was a big power trip. Or power trip. Sorry, power trip. Power trip. Yeah, that was power, power trip. trip. Is a power and, they, and they were a fucking power. They they probably was gonna say power that was power that. Power I have trip to is, say, yeah. Bill, that was one of the bands. I swear to God, the next record would have been through the goddamn roof. Yeah, because they were on the. Yeah. the they were of the amazing. Next big I have. Thing, I've yeah. seen. I've seen thousands of bands live. Thousands. Yeah. When they played recently with, uh, they did a tour with. Uh, uh, who the hell was it? I saw Obituary. Him with, uh, high on fire. They played with Obituary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Holy shit, fire. dude! They they yeah, and that's they asking a lot to go with blew the stage obituary. completely apart. Exactly. The, right. the 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 circle pit never stopped the entire time. They played for forty seven minutes, and the mm-hmm. circle pit was just over and over, and they were just unbelievable. If you have a chance, watch the House of Strombo with Power Trip. Okay. It is unbelievable. They is that, is that the one that's in black and white? It's the one in black and white. They play yeah, at the I've guy's house and they're awesome. like, yeah. they're like, we want to apologize ahead of time because we're gonna destroy this fucking house. And yeah. and and they only play like six or seven songs, but yeah, just boy, that one was that one that was hard to hear that he fucking passed away because he was yeah. what 30 something? 32, 34, something. Oh like yeah, man. Young dude. So Riley Gale, power trip, rest in peace, man. Uh, they were fucking, like you said, Greg, on the, I mean, they were fucking big. They were, they, they were, were huge. They were going nowhere, but they were, up. yeah, nowhere mm-hmm. but up. Um, Lee Kerslake from Ozzy mm-hmm. played with Ozzy, oh, a couple Ozzy sucked. albums. You're right. Um, he... Got fucking, got a, got a raw deal, man. Dude, yeah. got a fucking raw got deal shit. about, yeah, shit show. Got man. shit on, should have had a lot more money, should have. Yeah, he got yeah that straight. whole all right. those fucking remakes and shit with yeah that was that yeah was that fun, was man yeah. so but, but I mean but, I don't know the business side of it I don't know anything I just know he played on those you know the couple Ozzy albums and uh, <clears throat> he played with a bunch of fucking other people too right so. heap he played yeah. with your right heap forever dude in the seventies yeah, so mm-hmm. another one Lee Curse like I, I we couldn't go without mentioning him um and then the last one that I'll talk about real quick was uh was Leslie West. I know that just fucking hit us. which sucked because I met Leslie West one time at the uh, D drum factory when he was there. I was there getting some drum shit, and he was there doing whatever because he's he's endorsed by Dean Guitars, and uh, yeah, I met him like real quick for two minutes with his wife. Um, super cool guy, but uh, that was another one that I had to fucking I had an eight track. Um, with mountain on it and i used to play mm-hmm. along to that shit and it was just to me i always thought he was like anything i listened to with him you could tell it was his fucking guitar he was another one of those guys that had that fucking signature guitar sound um and just you know obviously all like eddie loved him zach wild loves him you know all these other guys loved him obviously there's a reason why they looked up to him so much and it's because he had his fucking sound you mm-hmm. know what i mean like you listen to Mountain Man, like any of the sh- any of the Mountain stuff that's came out. There's there's really not bad Mountain songs. There's some that are more popular than others, and you might not be into them. But his guitar is fucking heavy and just mm-hmm. thick, like really, really fucking good. So um, losing him, you know, towards as the years closing out, like the last one, kind of fuck you to to humanity, I guess, was, was, you know, taking Leslie West from us. And I know there's been a lot of other people besides metal people and everything that have died, but these are the guys. Oh God, Charlie Daniels, fucking Kenny Rogers. I mean, yeah, just shit that we grew up listening to. I mean, Bill, I, I remember listening to Kenny Rogers over uh, the gambler was like, Gambler, Coward, Coward, the yeah, my mom had oh, Coward of the County, man. Yeah, dude, that was like 
That you was know, the, don't those take the your radio fucking pop love to town. town. Yeah. You know, <laughs> come on, yep. don't take it to town. Right. You know? yeah. Charlie Daniels, man. I mean, I come remember on, seeing Charlie him Daniels, dude. over Fuck in yeah. Webster, over oh. at the uh, the the venue up in Webster that I got married at, man, and just yeah, um, but, you know. Well, we're at that age, man. So it was tough. Well, yeah. AJ, I wanted you to mention uh, Martin. Burke. Oh, hi, Dave. How you doing? <laughs> he's like, he's like, I'm over here with my he's like, prescription. He's like, hi, Dave. My prescription. Yeah, hi. <laughs> so uh, August 9th, Martin Burke. No, I, mean, I know it, you're it, right. He wasn't, yeah. he wasn't young, but I mean, he has no, to be mentioned no. just because I mean, yeah, Martin Burke, was he? yeah. he's like 71. Uh, 71, yeah. yeah. Which yeah. is still but, not fucking old by today. No, no, it's not, not at all. It's not. Yeah, because there's people living in their hundreds easy. Right. So Jay, tell us. I mean, the guy well, yeah, his I mean, resume was insane, dude. Martin Birch's resume is so insane that he engineered. You know, he starts out an engine as an engineer. And he's working with Fleetwood Mac. He's working with Wishbone Ash. He works with Deep Purple. He ends up basically moving into the producer role and does a shit ton. Does ten albums with Deep Purple. You know, Richie Blackmore Covered goes in there, Rainbow. Right? We he ends up hanging out with uh, Rainbow. Meets Ronnie James Dio. Black Sabbath says, all right, Ronnie James says, you're the guy. Let's go do Mob Rules in Heaven and Hell. You know, so, I mean, that was a major, you know, up to that point, Black Sabbath was self-produced, you know. So this is the first time an official producer comes in. So you get the whole Ronnie James Dio vibe with those two albums. But really, I mean, Martin Birch, when I hear the name Martin Birch, I think Iron Maiden. Yeah, and you've absolutely. got ten, yeah. Fuck, yeah. you've got yep. ten straight albums. Fucking 19, Iron Maiden. Yeah, dude. Iron Man. 1981 exactly. through 1982. Yep. We're talking Killers. Yep. We're talking Number of the Beast, Peace of Mind, Power Slave, Live After Death, Somewhere in Time, Made in England, Seventh Son, No Prayer for the Dying, and his last Iron Maiden album was Fear of the Dark. Ten got, fucking albums. Yes, ten. dude. Yes, of the what I think is the core of what I you know is Iron Maiden for me. You know, right? That is oh, hold the on. Iron that, that that's was... a whole different podcast there, Jay. We'll, right. we'll, and we'll leave that for another time. But, but not to mention but, yeah. <laughs> purple. I mean, all the yeah, all come the on, deep purple, deep purple, dude. Yeah, deep purple. purple. Yeah, yeah, right. Let's not let's not nine night uh, white snake albums. Yep. Come on, Absolutely. two blue oyster cult. I mean, Godzilla, oh. dude. Come on, Godzilla. what are we talking about? <laughs> this guy is this fucking prolific engineer slash producer Godzilla. of the time you know Godzilla. Godzilla. Yeah. and uh yeah rainbow as well so i mean the guy was absolutely. just absolutely so yeah i mean it, and we again not young not old but um and, and a not legend a, several a, legend. 73 what did, what did he die from did it say we have like cancer undisclosed unannounced unproclaimed it's one of those yeah. things nobody wants to talk about what it. yeah they're just like eh, none of your fucking business yeah, that's the family. Yeah. Exactly. Go fuck yeah. That's family like that. going go like fuck that. yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. I like and you know what too. he died from? He died from go fuck yourself. That's what. Yeah. Go fuck. Yeah. None, of your, none of your fucking business. Yeah. That's right. Suck a dick. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, suck a dick. So I nothing to see here. I'm gonna, I, go ahead. So here, here, I'm gonna whip through my. I'm gonna <laughs> go. This is gonna be the fastest <laughs> top five. You're gonna whip it. Whip it out. Whip it. Whip it out. Fastest top five list I'll ever do. All right. Five. My top five albums of 2020, and this—I oh, gotta pull up my cheat sheet. I'm wait, not wait. even gonna comment. This is the guy. Wait, wait, wait. Come on, come clean. I don't have a fucking top. Five. Look, I don't I like. Yeah, you said that. No, no albums shit, of 2020 uh, were worth like listening to. What album? Dave. Well, there were a couple I didn't realize were released in 2020. I thought they were 2019. Oh. Uh, but, um, right. but so this is my fast, really fast list. I'm not gonna even comment. <laughs> um, so. This is my list in no order, no particular order. King Buffalo, Dead Star. That's an um, EP. Okay. An EP. Well, it's, it's, ah, yeah. It's, it's counts as EP. release. Well, I, I, could mention, a new release. I could mention the Ghost Snake, Red which was Ram. two songs. That's not even an EP. Um, so, yeah, King Buffalo, Dead Star, uh, Elder, Omen, uh, Omen. Oh, Elder. Elder's getting a lot of publicity on that. Yeah, good so record. Yep. Good record. Uh, the new album from Dope Lord, a uh, band from Poland. The new album is called Sign of the Devil. Um, Demonic Death Judge. Uh, love that band. They have a new album oh, called The oh, Trail, yeah. and um, the band, the album. It's not uh, uh, an album by a band, but it's that Volume Four redo. Oh, where, that thing is amazing! It is yeah, amazing, dude. dude. Spirit of Rift and fucking oh my god! Oh yes, oh, thank, you. So thank you, thank you. Yeah, so that's dude. Magnetic so Eye good. doing. Yep. They had two Black Sabbath uh, issues this year: Volume Four and then a Best of. Which one do you like better, Dave? 
I, I, I oh, like volume four. four just because like you, you get the songs that people don't typically do. You know what I mean? Right. Like you're getting the entire album. You're getting under the sun and you're getting tomorrow's right. dream. And like doing you're getting, effects. And you're Pike yeah, doing Pike, effects. Dude, oh, and when Pike, Pike did that, that, dude, that he, thing is amazing. He, he layers like seven, amazing. eight songs into that thing. He yeah. does more than dude, just Wait effects. till you hear his fucking solo album. <laughs> oh yeah. For real. Oh, it's coming. Oh, it's coming. Yeah. It's coming. Yeah. It's coming. And the new high on fire. Yeah. All right. All right. But before sure. before I get hey Dave, to... what'd you say about Goat Snake? You, you mentioned Goat Snake. Oh, they songs? had a two song EP. What? And yeah. were they good? Dude, I, didn't I didn't know. Knew, I didn't hear yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. they've got that a, they got a slip two song me, EP. Man. Who plays uh, on them? I mean, who the fuck? It's, who's it's drumming. It, who's? Well, it's it's got to be Greg, right? Let's, let's look. Let's well, look. it's it's, let's it's look. Greg and Pete. I don't know the rest. Honestly, don't know the rest of the band. It's just it's Greg and Pete. Good or not bad? I like it. I mean, it's it's only two songs, but I like both of them. Um. Did Breakfast with the King, I think, is one of the ones. Breakfast um, with the King, Southern Lord Records. Here we go. Let's see. Give me some Death Wish. So you have Death Wish and Breakfast with the King are the only two songs. Okay. Um, it came out in June of 2020. Um, we want to know who's drumming. Is that the key question? Yeah. I guess that's yeah, because I know right? Greg Anderson's got to be on guitar and vocals, and who's, who else is on it? Could have got Joey yes. to play on it. Because Joey Castillo. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it. Joey Castillo could have played on it. Web page is not showing anything. You dirty fuck. You dirty yeah. fuckers. All right, you yeah. want to hear my top album? Yes. Do it, do it, do it. Go for oh, it. We've yes. been waiting all year. All right. all right, here you go, fuckers. <laughs> yeah. We've been waiting all year. Here you go. <laughs> all right. All right. Drink. Number one. <laughs> Poison. Yeah. All right, first one. Kirk Winstein, Dream in Motion. Nice. Oh, I'm glad you mentioned record. that. Badass great record. album. Badass. 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 He does the old Aqualung cover yeah. on that. Aqualung. Yeah. Awesome. Um, I, I just started like getting into this, but it's actually pretty good. I mean, you can't go fucking wrong with the format. ACDC, Power Up. Oh, it's, it's actually, a great record. Great one. Actually, pretty Start fucking finish, good, man. Really yep. good record. Yep. Um, Testament, Titans of Creation. At first, I was like, it's good. It's good. But the more right, I listen to it, the more right, Dave. I'm like, Come on, Dave. Right, Dave. The more I listen to God, it. I thought right, you Dave. were a, a <laughs> solid 1,000% so, Testament. Oh, yeah, it's, come hey, it's on. actually oh, pretty. Oh, my God. Um, oh, another band good. that it's I've good. been into fucking for a good, long fucking time. <laughs> um, I don't hear enough about these guys. Um, I probably don't talk enough about them. I fucking forget about them sometimes when I'm making up lists. But a band called Paradise Lost. Oh, they were. Oh, phenomenal. there you go. They have an album that came out there called you Obsidian. Go, yep, yeah. Obsidian fucking phenomenal. Great. Um, sixteen. Six, yes. Sixteen's on my list. Water. Yes, Shit. me too. God. Yeah, well, I wouldn't know him. It wasn't for Bill. So yeah, creds, bro. Fuck right. Sixteen. Uh, Chromags in the beginning, and then they also yeah. re re released yep. uh 2020 EP. So they have yep. two albums come out this year. Good yep. And they were the fucking first motherfuckers. To do, the whole, to do the, the fucking COVID the, style. Yes, they were. They, it was, it Gorilla was them, style show. So it was, your show. And, and, uh, uh, it was them and uh, the band that you like, Dave. Uh, what's the band that you like with uh, Air Dead Eye and <laughs> <laughs> Neil Sedaka? No, no, King Neil Buffalo. Sedaka. King Buffalo, okay. Air <laughs> There we go. Glass oh, it out. I'm so, so lost about you. So All right, sweet. Wino, Forever Gone Acoustic. Oh, great record. Acoustic. Fucking oh, record is. That oh, record shit. is badass. If you don't like that record, you need you to get suck a dick. In, you need to be punched in the dick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> another band from New England. I've don't say New England. You're stealing my thunder. Oh, Sorry. Thunder. They're uh, Bone they're Church. fucking. Are they from Portland? They're new Maine? metal. Well, they're kind of. They're not new metal. They're okay. Kind of. I don't even know. They're fucking heavy. They're heavy as yeah. fuck. The band called The Acacia Strain. Oh, and, no, they're uh, good. Yep. And All the right. album's Hang called on. Slow Decay. Dude. Oh, I okay. fucking forgot about that one. That one was so good, dude. fucking. Mm. Yeah. Like, shit, if you that want one was good. Guitars tuned as low as they possibly yeah. fucking go to where the strings are falling off. Yeah. And your face to melt. It's so heavy, but slow and pushing. Listen yeah. to the Acacia Strain. Oh, shit. The new right, album what city are they Slow from? Decay. Let's find out. Acacia they're from like uh, New Haven, right? Springfield or no? They're from Mass. Oh, they're from Mass. Chicopee. Nice. Chicopee. Oh, Chicopee. Yes. Chicopee. What Joe did. Sweet. Chicopee. So, um, next one, Marilyn Manson. We are Chaos. Fucking great album. Great album. Not as heavy. Totally wow, different I than his older stuff. One. Okay. Really good. Uh, Shooter Jennings recorded yeah. a lot of the stuff. No shit. When did that cool, one come cool. out? It came out. Uh, I don't know. A couple months ago. It's fucking oh, good. Fuck, I missed that one. Uh, Mastodon, medium rarities, a lot of rare oh, stuff. Oh, dude, that's a great record. Great fucking record. Stairway to Heaven cover is fucking. Beautiful. Yeah, not a lot of new stuff, but mm -hmm. still came out. 
it's an album came out oh this one was a powerhouse still listening to this deftones ohms oh ohms was great fucking dude. great this one Stellar, dude great this drumming. one is the top of this list if i had to make an order yeah. raging speed horn hard to kill yeah hard to kill was fucking right gigantic oh, they had some great riffs gigantic. on that thing. it's like yeah. a riff machine i remember yeah. you um, telling me about that you're like hey check this one out greg and i was like <laughs> like the whole memorex <laughs> blew your wig back uh next one circus of power process of uh illumination yeah the VP. VP. vp we we interviewed alex a couple months back super cool dude this album's uh came out this year finally came out in cd format we got it um this next one is a band that the drummer played with integrity and i think the guitar player played with integrity um another one of those bands that's fucking heavy stoner mixed with fucking grind mixed with just a lot of good shit uh a band called ilsa and the and the album oh yeah Bad. that's a great record man hmm. fucking great fucking if you haven't right. heard ilsa check it out it's good and then the last one dave will appreciate the name of this album is a band that i've been into for a long time i don't really talk about them that much but i've got all their shit um another one i should probably talk more about is a band called bongzilla and i'm sure people fucking have heard of bong i've seen them live yeah. Mm -hmm. They are fucking heavier than John Candy on a Clydesdale. And their album is called Thank You, Marijuana. <laughs> nice. So check nice. all those fucking out. Party, drink a beer, smoke dope, do whatever you do, but enjoy yourself. And those That's albums. Right. That's right. Fuck 2020. I want to hear, I actually want to hear Jay's fucking top whatever for for the year for best albums. Do you have a uh, top one? Yeah, man. Here's what I'm going to do. I, uh, I'm going to give you. Where are you going, Dave? Big D, right back. Dave's He's gonna, gonna be right back. Pit stop. Dave's gonna be right back. He's on the edit anyway. What? Oh, he's gonna hear. Dave's right, gotta cool. take a poop. Oh, hold on a second. So no, he's gotta fill up because I gotta fill up beers. I gotta take a piss too. Dave? I need some ice. My shit is warm. Yeah, like, let's take five minutes. Let me go get take a leak and get some. Uh, All right, I'm gonna pound this right, right here. Yeah, We're gonna take five. Take five. I'll be right back. All right, take five. I gotta hobble. Cocaine. I gotta hobble down the stairs. Everybody took a pit stop. Good idea. Yeah, it was a little break action, Big D. I had to. I, I could not. It's all right, dude. We all wanted to. <laughs> we all wanted to. We all needed to. And I'm so well, I'll wait for Big right I'll wait for a while, Bill. Come back. Uh, all right. Drinking's fun. 
Dude, I know I'm catching a serious buzz. I'm loving it. <laughs> Look at Dave. Dave. Dave's like, I have this little pen and it makes me happy. Dave's like, I know, bro. You can like, dude, the fact you could just like walk the streets. Yeah, just fucking all day, walk 24. Like, be good to nothing's go. wrong, bro. Yeah. Where in Florida are you? <laughs> Tampa. Oh, uh, Tampa. Ish. Yeah, you're good to go. Yep. Man, that's sweet. So, uh, what's your blend? What's your blend of choice that you got there? Uh, I, 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 purple Nurple. I'm trying. This is a 5 3 ratio, 5 CBD, 3 THC. It's probably too much for me to go to work on. You know what I mean? Like, I, I can't. Yeah, I, love, I love that he's got <laughs> heavy equipment. Don't operate heavy equipment. <laughs> yeah. Don't touch your hog then. I can't teach your children. Mm. He's like, I can't touch my penis though. when I'm smoking. Yeah. <laughs> heavy equipment the doctor said <laughs> oh shit so where do we leave uh, off uh, Jay, jay's gonna hit us with his yeah uh, yeah i was right, yeah jay hit us up with your all uh, right so just to let you guys know that you know really cool that uh bill mentioned uh testament yeah because i was that was on my honorable mentions a couple bands <laughs> that if it wasn't for wild bill i don't think i'd know about one of them is uh 16 love that fucking that album that album's Damn. great. Do some new shit. lead and then, singer too. New lead singer. And uh, yeah, yeah, FYI, Lord Gates. Yeah. I got your Lord Gates. That one you had the one song on. Your, oh, you got the uh, CD. Twenty list. Me and the dog died it. together. Yeah, Me unfortunately, the, the CD, the the, the mail, the, the freaking died. U.S. Postal yeah. Service cracked Fuck the CD. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they, so I couldn't listen to it, but I was able to go. Are you fucking serious? I'm not lying. I ain't lying. Are you? I'm gonna send you another one. Fuck that shit, dude. Okay. But it was you had that on there, so I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. So really, when it comes down to it, fuckers, I'm gonna let you know. Here's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Look at Dave. Dave's like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> He's like, "Oh shit." Yeah. What's about um, to happen? It's getting have real. You, have you guys heard Phil Campbell and the Bastard Son? Oh, yes, great. Are, I love records. them. Love them. Love them. Yes. Records. Yes. yes. What's yeah. so cool about that? You got a dad, a legendary yes. Motorhead yep. rocking dad, and his kids, <laughs> and they're it's a fucking they straight rule. up rock and roll album. I mean, that's what I love about it. It's rock and roll. You know. Heavy, but not like it's not metal. It's rock. It's a fucking no, it's rock and rock. rock, baby. It's really good shit. Um, dude, how can you not miss Mr. Bungle when you get oh, Lombardo? The raging you get Lombardo and you get fucking, fucking Scott Easter Ian. Easter Bunny. Oh, Come on, phenomenal. right, right, right. Yep. With Scott Ian from Anthrax. And exactly. Lombardo that was one I almost and... put it on my list, but I'm like, well, I haven't really listened to it a lot. Oh, it's the such a straight up ones I listen to. Record. Straight up, yep. We got Dave Lombardo. And no horns. I, no, exactly, no dude. Horns. Exactly. No horns. Just exactly. And when I read... Dude, almost every week, Scott Ian had some press release where he's interviewed by this guitar magazine or that, talking about how insane it was for him to learn the riffs on that. Yeah. Because they were so cutting edge for their time. It was well, like, that sh- that those riffs old. were that, that much ahead old, of their dude. time. Yeah. Right. That's from so like that's, 87, I think, right? Yeah, that's what's so amazing. It's like, they were doing stuff that pr- that was a predecessor to a whole style of music before it even emerged. <laughs> so that's fucking badass. Um, <laughs> official releases that are on the like upper mainstream Seven Dust, Blood and Stone. Dude, oh, fuck, oh I missed that God, one. So heavy. There are such heavy riffs on that album, but with well, they're John heavy. and they're his, heavy anyway. his freaking yeah. his man, soulful singing is amazing. Damn. Plus, they do the they do the Sound Garden cover. Yeah, man, that's that's fucking great, dude. Well, that whoa. Lamb of God, Lamb of God. Uh, Holy shit, check such, fucking mate fucking groove so many grooves that i'm just like holy shit man this is great when lamb of god becomes to the comes to the point you're like yeah i could fucking chill out to this shit you're like years ago i was like lamb of god so insane heavy now i'm like grooving to the shit like i love it it's just, i have a feeling mark morton's gonna end up leaving lamb of god he maybe will why. you know that why, he probably why will. Does, I always get that yeah, he puts out he puts out the you know the whole uh solo album he's doing acoustic stuff I really love those songs. I've got four or five of the songs you did with Dez. Yeah, yeah you like those, those are right? Good. It's fucking great, dude. They're mm-hmm. fucking great songs, man. They're like it's like Circus of Power, but like a little bit heavier. You're just like fuck, and that's what that was right. one of their influences. Was there's, you know, they're like yeah, it's Circus of Power. We're we're channeling like Circus of Power and somebody else. I forget who else they mentioned. I'm like, that's right. what the fuck it sounds right. like. I was like, that's awesome. Hi, Dave. 
And I know we talked about Dave mentioned King Buffalo Dead Star. King yeah, Buffalo. granted, it's an EP. Un fucking believable. I, I was kind of, I've, I've know, been, heard of these guys, so I'll have to check there's them a kind. Oh I was kind of wondering if so good if so cover good. albums and if EP should be you know allowed. But yeah, you know, in some yeah cases, cover albums. Eh, why not? Yeah, you know, because you know the, we the talked the about the Sabbath, the that Sabbath ju- that uh, uh, John Carpenter song they do. They do a John Carpenter song on keyboards that is un fucking believable dude seriously sure and they were they were one of um the uh the king buffalo they were they were one of the first bands that did the whole what do you call it um the covid19 series where they were in like their studio and putting out all these videos right Right, yeah yeah Yeah. that's right now these two it's interesting i got the bill's the one that kind of flagged me to say check these out uh, it wasn't too long ago he mentioned low, go check out Refractions by Lowrider. Oh, and yeah, that was like fucking two weeks Low ago. Riders. He's like, check that fucking out. Hey, that new album's that great. one's fucking great. Holy but shit. Bill, you remember over the summer you said check out Mercy Alago out of Portland, Maine? Mm-hmm. Their album Casualties. Holy fuck, that's that's my favorite one for 2020. Yeah, yeah, those guys are Mercy fucking, Alago. It's in there, they're Portland, not, they're Maine. like a they're not a full time band, I don't think. I think they all work jobs and. Right. Ocean. I'm like, how the fuck is this band not like touring yeah. with Metallica and opening up for these other right. because they are they're like scissor fight. Like these bands should be fucking playing in your face. In your face, all over the opening up instead of yeah. these other fucking bands like garbage you know, like, bands. Yeah, garbage shit. Punch, shit man. Yeah. Like a exactly. band like how the fuck does that I don't know. Why? There's a, yeah, there's a exactly. list of that. There's a list it's of wrong. Of, it's fucking, fucking wrong. shit bands that I can name. But I won't. I won't go stepping on people's balls. But there's so many shit right. bands out there that that could be, you know, yeah, playing a fucking not even a. Lo- I don't even know. Why well, can't the bands that we like be playing no in front shit. of people? What I the know. fuck? It should be like into another and oh, fucking cable yes. and yeah, exactly. scissor fight and all these right. other bands should Cave be band fucking opening fucking up for all these big right. acts. Right. And then people go, holy fuck. I know Look at these guys. Look at these guys are amazing. Know, what the fuck is this? I've never heard anything like this before. So I mean, I know one thing we're gonna do because we do it with every show is we'll curate a list of the songs that we know people oh, should for, hear. Because uh, yeah, dude, yeah, the Spotify for, list, for the Spotify. Yeah, yeah. you know, I I guarantee damn people are gonna be like, yeah, thank you for creating that list because that's a band I. Yeah, it'll be it, absolutely. We'll do the Spotify. It'll be the top. Um, top songs of 2020 um so you know just send a send a song or two from all the bands about, that you guys how about top today, 20 so. of 20 we each yeah top five. 20 yeah of 20. sure dude whatever yeah each dude. each guy your perfect idea each guy picks five songs and it's the top 20 of 20 all right perfect yeah because that raging speed horn there were some awesome riffs on that thing i'm like this is insane the Fuck 16 you. The, the 16 release this year, awesome dream squasher well i have to we're, say we're, we're gonna the, interview uh, him if you guys want to you know, if we all want to be involved with it, or you know, I don't, I didn't know if you all, but um, the guitar player, you know, he's he's ready to interview whenever we want. Sweet, Just got to give sweet. him like a little. Bit, he's, he's down. Yeah, Bobby. Yeah. Cool, cool. I have to say that the the top five that I and it this was fucking hard because I whittled down from a hundred to five. I I went from a hundred to thirty to five was. Uh, was really fucking hard. Well, I, yeah, I've, before you, hey Greg, before you start, yeah. Lord Gates, he actually did his show this week earlier. Yeah, and you started with, I mean, when you created your list from the start, what did you start with? Did you start with a hundred and have to? I started with one hundred and twenty. Oh, one hundred and twenty. Wow. Okay, one hundred and twenty, and and then I went down to about full 80. albums or songs. Full albums. Holy! I had one hundred twenty albums, and I went down to probably about eighty albums, and I went down to about fifty. And then it went down to 30 and I kept it at 30. I did a, a top okay. 30 on uh, www.raptureradio666.com. And for me, it was, I, I tried to pick albums that I felt were, I listened to them over and over and over. Like for instance, Dream Squasher from 16. That was, that was a, that was no fucking brainer mm-hmm. over and over. I listened to that even with the new lead singer. I thought it was incredible. The Raging Wrath of the Easter Bunny demo from Mr. Bungle was number five for me. Mm-hmm. Though I have to say, though, you know, Jay from a from a Stoner Doom point of view, because I love Stoner Doom. 
Mm-hmm. There was a bunch of great records that came out. And one of the ones that I love was the woes of Immortal earth from brimstone coven was just a beautiful fucking record right. on fucking right. believable. Okay, cool. Um, bone church from Connecticut did nice. acid communion, which was yeah. dude, that, that record was just who's in bone go, church real quick, right? We know who's in bone. We, church. Um, the reason why we know Bone Church is when, when you came down to visit with me, and we did that um, that live remote in uh, Norwich, Connecticut, before yeah. the Stoner and Doom Fest. Yeah, Bone Church played that night. Okay, so who's in it? Like, uh, which guys are in it that I would know? Um, it's not that we know them; it's just that we we know them from being from New Haven, Connecticut. Okay, okay. and Acid Communion. Is prob is my number two record of the year because they they took the whole um what do you call it the uh, the Salem witch trials and made a record out of it. Okay, is what they did. Um and and it's unbelievable from start to finish. One of my favorite songs on there is "If They Float," which talks about how if you're gonna find out if the person is a witch. If they float like a duck floats, then yeah. then they're a witch, you know. And that record is 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 pristine. But mm-hmm. my number one record of the year, and it's one of the bands I got to see this year, was only one of the bands I got to see this year. That's from um, originally from Connecticut, from uh, New York. Now was uh, no good to anyone from today's the day. I have to say that today's the day is one of those record is one of those bands that just gets it right. It, the, the lineup is always changing except for Steve Austin and they are absolutely 150% insane. When you see them live, they're one of those bands. He lives in New York now. He lives in New York now. He used to be in Connecticut. He was in Connecticut he was in Massachusetts and he went to New York, but he's one of those bands where you see them live and it, it's just, you have to see them live. You have to experience them live to experience all the insanity, the craziness, the fucking maniacalness. They put, they, they put their soul on the stage. And when you watch them, he always has musicians with them that give 150%. So I have to say today is the day is one of my um, sweet is, a, is the number one record of the year. I think there it's just incredible. Temple of the Morning Star is one of the oh my god fucking that, songs ever that that song Phil, that just, record that record is 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 uh is synonymous. Oh, they were on relapse for that one. Yeah, yeah, nice. It doesn't Listen even matter what song, fucking Jay, record like that label they will. Okay, cool, cool. They, cool. A just great just song. I got to hang out with uh I got to hang out with Reverend. Uh, with Reverend Steve Austin, when we did the cable record, uh, Northern Failures, I did all the the background shit for it. You know, all the fucking like when Buzz Unwin used to do all the background shit for their for their songs and stuff. You know, all their samples and stuff. Yeah, exactly. The Exorcist shit. Yeah, and Steve Austin is one of these producers that just goes above and beyond to deal with the band that he's dealing with. But his own band is he puts his soul out on the mat for those bands. And he pulls in these these fucking players that are unbelievable. I am so glad that that is one of the bands I got to see this year before this year went tits up. Mm-hmm. Um, because I appreciate shows more because of seeing that show than seeing any other, any other show this year. Um. Real quick, I just want to just we can maybe we can go around just touch on a couple of their your their maybe favorite moments of the year uh, or something that actually did happen in music besides the record releases. Um, the one thing it's funny our first our very first show we had talked about whether um, Is that online this year. Shows. Yes. Well, yeah, Jan- uh, June. June. So we, I think it was May or June, but we talked about the viability of online shows. Like, is this going to work? Oh yeah. Conscious, how many bands yeah. are going to do it? Is it, you know, is this the future? You know, we were kind of just talking about what's going to happen because we knew they were coming down the road. Um, and my two favorite moments musically from this year were uh, 
So the down, um, the down show, uh, their their twentieth, uh, twenty fifth, twenty five year throw quarter century throwdown. That yeah. was August 29th, The that live stream awesome. they did. I thought it was really. That was my favorite live stream of the year. I thought it was really good. Um, I drank I a little thought, bit at that show. I drank a little bit. And my other, my other moment was uh, the other live stream that I really liked. That I think they they nailed it. Was the wind hand? Um, the oh, that was specials. unbelievable. Did so, you take mushrooms at that show? No, but I, I felt like I did. <laughs> Dude, that show was so like, <laughs> like, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was it was wild. So, but it was unbelievable. So, so I'm sure not every. I mean, I, there were some other good uh, live stream shows too, which you guys might want to mention. But I want to mention those two. I think um, you know, live music is never going to be replaced. But in a year where we didn't have it, this was a close second, at least. You know, we had these, and there were a couple more out there. So, who wants to mention uh, any other good moments from the year? I'll well, say that, uh, the Steel Panther one <laughs> with the Ozzy thing and all that was fucking great. And then uh, Clutch, man. Yeah, Clutch. clutch one. Yeah, I like, I like the, yeah, I like the, well, the first Clutch one because it was, and um, I'm not going to leave out the Chromags. I mean, that was the first oh, one. That was, that was yeah, fucking that one. awesome, that was man. Awesome. That one was but, um, great. That was the first like, one. Yeah, like the, like, yeah, yeah. those three were, were great. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and probably, the top of all those, just because I've been into this band forever from the beginning all the way through, um, was the down show. I, yeah. I think the down show was fucking phenomenal, man. Like, seriously, that was, to me, I that agree. was the best out of all of them. That, to me, that was my favorite. I loved all those other ones. They were amazing, but seeing down, original down together and sounding so fun. Yeah, like, it sounded so amazing. Cool. Yes. Oh, some brothers and fucking blah, blah, blah. our brothers and into brothers the void. in Australia, our brothers and into the void. Fuck yeah. <laughs> so out to our so yeah, you love those guys. Yeah, yeah, that was that was the best. In my opinion, down was yeah. down was the best. I have to say that one of the best bands and one of, on. I mean, Clutch was amazing, but. One of, one of the best live online shows this year was fucking Weed Eater, ASG, and Toke. Yes, dude, that those, was in your hometown. Dude, Wilmington. those guys dude. played like fucking 15 minutes away from me over at nice. uh, at Reggie's. And we, I am a huge Weed Eater fan because I absolutely fucking love anything that dixie dave does i i'm a huge buzzum fan man bill what's the band that he does with um uh the other band uh hail hornet or hail hornet is unbelievable and and just it was so cool like being like 20 minutes away from the venue but able to tune in and drink Mm -hmm. and relax and just enjoy an incredible 3d set which was so fucking weird or whatever mm -hmm. but yeah that that was the big one for me was the uh the weed eater uh asg and uh and toke and i have to i have to give uh, a big uh heads up to the band toke because i think they're working on a new record they have a new drummer and i'm really excited about it because those guys are fucking killer man Jay, man, what end us on a good note? What was your, uh, what was your decent, enjoyable moment of 2020? Um, well, online it was the down show because I remember we were all hyped up that we they were doing the down show, and I'm not going to say that you guys had some doubts, but maybe a few of us had some doubts. I on did. Whether, I did. Okay, whether whether Phil would uh, step it up, and he did. So. He did, and uh, and I just sent you guys a note. My my uh, my bad. I got. A bit All right, of go ahead. Right yeah, now, do so. you think? Yeah, brother. go go, bro. I see it. I see it. Dave, Dave's got to sign off, so we'll keep going for a okay. little bit. But uh, yep. love you, bro. Yep. All right, love you, bro. See you. Happy New Year. Go do what you Happy New Year, gents. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, brother. No worries. No worries. Hey. No worries. We've got. You know, 